Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can analyze a single nominal variable using Microsoft Excel and my own Stickpad E add-on. This add-on you can install by downloading it from my GitHub account. You download the file, you open up Excel and via File, Options, Add-ins and then Go. You can then browse to the file you just downloaded and it should be installed. This video will focus on actually uh, obtaining output not so much actually also how to interpret that output. To analyze a single nominal variable we can create a frequency table, visualize the results, determine the mode and the variation ratio, perform a chi-square test of goodness of fit, determine Kramer's V, uh, do a pairwise binomial test and add Cohen's G as an effect size for that. I also have alternatives available um, the visualizations, by the way, there are no special functions for those. You can create those simply with Excel itself. Alternative measures could be the variation, uh, various methods of uh, qualitative variation. There are a bunch of different tests that can be used and there are also alternative effect sizes. Let's have a look at the example. So I have all my data here in column A, which was about marital uh, status. And the first thing I did was generated a frequency table. I used a tab frequency function for that from the stickpad E library. And once you do that, it actually shows you the frequencies, the percentages, developed percentages, and cumulative percentages. These last ones are not so interesting for nominal variables. Uh, and the difference between percent and valid percent is that the percentages include the missing values. So as you can see, these won't sum up to 100% because there were a few people who didn't answer this question. The valid percentages use as a total the sum of all the valid frequencies, so basically all the ones that you see here. Now, to generate a bar chart of this, you can actually use Microsoft Excel for that. I have a separate video on how you can do that, but you can simply select what it is you want to see. Go for Insert and then select here a column chart and just hit the clustered column and you get yourself your bar chart. Now the peak one is also known as the mode so you can use m the measurements function mode for this and it will actually give you what the mode is and the frequency of that mode. The nice one about this function from my library is that it will also show you if there's multiple modes. Now the variation ratio is sometimes used as a measure of dispersion for this. Um, you can simply use measurements, ME, variation ratio, and always use specific range, so not an entire column A, for example. Um, there are quite a lot of different uh, measures of qualitative variation. Um, I have a bunch of them under one function, and I'll show you that later on. Now to test if the percentages or the frequencies were uh, not the same for all of them, we could run a Pearson chi-square uh, goodness of fit test. So if you run this and it will spill over um, and it will simply show you the sample size, uh, the number of categories, the test statistic, in this case a chi-square value, the degrees of freedom, which is simply the number of categories minus one, the two-sided p-value, so the probability value, the minimum expected count, the proportion of cells that was below 5, and a description of the test. Now, uh, the minimum expected count should be at least 5, or some will say even um, at least 1. So that's fine in this case, and the p-value is then the one to focus on. In this case, it's below 0.05, it's so close that it even gets rounded to 0. Um, but it's definitely below 0.05, so therefore that's the usual threshold. We would reject the assumption, which in this case that all categories would have had the same frequencies in the population. Now, for a test, there should always be an effect size, and one of those could be the Kramer's V, um, specifically for the goodness of fit. There's also a Kramer's V for a test of independence. We can specify that. Um, we simply fill it out with the statistic value. We give it the sample size and we give it the number of categories and it will calculate Kramer's V for us. We can then actually convert this to a Cohen's W using the convert function. So the value gets converted from a Kramer's V goodness of fit to a Cohen's W 
and we also then need to give it the number of categories. So in this case, Cohen's W would have been 0 0.80. The reason for this conversion that could be useful is that there are some rules of thumb for Cohen's W, and we can simply then feed it this Cohen W value, and we can see that according to Cohen's 1988, page 227, that can be classified as large. We would also like to know which categories specifically are different from each other. So for that we can perform a pairwise binomial test, so a post hoc test, pH, binomial, we feed again it the specific range and it will actually perform all possible combinations and for each, the sample size for each of those two categories, the percentage observed in the first care, uh, category, the expected proportion between the two, the p-value and then a Bonferroni adjusted p-value. All of these are still, the smallest one is 0 0.026, so that's still below 0 0.05, so they're all significantly different from each other. Alternative visualizations could be a Pareto chart, uh, a pie chart, um, a dot plot or a Cleveland dot plot, and I have separate videos for how to create each of those. As mentioned a few times, the alternative measures can be done with, for qualitative variation, can be done with MEQV, and then simply add the measure, um, measure that you want. So an abbreviation for it, here are all the possible abbreviations, and as you can see, there are quite a lot that this function can actually perform. The alternative tests, there are quite a few of that as well. There is a multinomial test. Uh, that one is an exact test and can take quite a long time, so I'm only using a few samples. Um, I would not advise using this function for large data sets because it can take up a very long time and might even crash. Um, goodness of fit test as a likelihood ratio test or a g-test or sometimes even a Wilkes test. We can use a freeman tukey one um, I thought I fixed this, I will fix it, it will give actually the same results in the end. A Neiman test for this, uh, a mod likelihood test, a freeman tukey test, and a power divergence test. Uh, the power divergence test, you can actually also add a lambda, uh, and then it will adjust accordingly. Alternative effect sizes, uh, a Pearson um, so the Pearson goodness of fit test and then we can use for example Cohen's W we actually saw this one earlier already uh, we can calculate it straight away by using Cohen's W and then feed it the st test statistic and the sample size there's also a Johnston Barry Mika E and for that one we need to feed it the test statistic the sample size but also the minimum expected count this can also be converted to a Cohen's W by using then GABME and Cohen W. If you would like to see some additional documentation on my website, I actually have documentation for the Python and R versions of this add-in, um, and the Excel functions should work the same way. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching. I'll leave, by the way, a link to this file in the description below. Thank you for watching.